Before I talk about the work that OST does, the Organization of Women in Science, I'm in the developing world, I must tell you a funny story because soon after I was elected president in 2016, I think it was, um, you know, we've got a young Academy of Science and um, they have an, uh, an annual meeting. And that year, the meeting happened to be women in science. So they asked me to be one of the speakers. So I stood up in front of this audience and I said, wow, there's so many young men here. Are you here to meet the young women? And they said, no, we actually want the women in our lives to be treated better than the women in our parents' lives, our mothers and our grandmothers and our aunts and all of that. So one of the first things I did when I uh, became president of OST was open membership to men. So men can become members of OST as long as they share our aims and they want women to get ahead in science. And I also opened it to social scientists because as a Maleka, as, as a genetic engineer, um, I would be nowhere without so, social scientists. So just to show you what, um, what happened in the very first days of my, um, my presidency. So we give, we have three main things that we do. We give fellowships, PhD and early career, I'll mention them all a little later. We have awards, and then we have the national membership. It, it, and the, the, one of the main aims of the uh, membership of the national chapter is networking. Because, you know, the men go to the pub after work, and of course the women can't because they have to do other things at home. But this is so important to do networking. So our PhD fellowships, we've got a, a, an aeroplane next to it because it gives them mobility. So we give fellowships to women in the developing world. We've got, uh, I'll show just now how many members we've got, but we've got members from all the developing countries in the world. And um, we give them fellowships to other developing countries so that they don't get lost to America and Europe and places like that. They tend to stay in the developing world if they get a PhD in another developing country. And um, then the early careers, because we found that when PhD graduates went back and became lecturers and senior lecturers and whatever, that really they needed support because I have to say it, sometimes they went back to, to quite a hostile environment because their male colleagues would say, oh, you've been given this fellowship. Now we're going to load you with teaching. So you've got no time to do research. So the early careers is to help women set up and develop their, their own laboratories and their own research. Then the OST awards are, and I'll come to just exactly what they are. They're given by Elsevier Foundation, which is a scientific publication company, and that gives them huge visibility, as we will see. And then the communication, which is, as Laura said, is so important, and that's our OST membership via the national chapters. Okay, so let's look first at the PhD fellowships. They're, from, they're given to women from science and technology lagging countries, the STLCs, which are uh, given by um, the United Nations. So, for instance, South Africa, you can become a member of OST and you can do all the uh, OST national chapter things, but you can't receive a fellowship because you are not from a, uh, a scientific and technology lagging countries. And similarly, Nigeria has recently been uh, taken off that, which is giving us a huge problem because we have lots and lots of applicants for PhD fellowships from, from Nigeria. And we give them in natural engineering, information technology sciences, and the host institute again is in the developing countries, the global south. And it's funded by CEDA, the, uh, the Swedish International Development Agency, and it's been going since 1998. So that's a long standing um, fellowship that we've had. And just to catch you up, so far, I mean, in, in the time we've had, uh, 576 fellowships have been awarded, 363 graduates, 151 are still studying. We've only had 62 dropouts in the 576 that were awarded, which I think is pretty good going. And the average is about four and a half years to completion. 
Then if we look at the early career fellowships, these are for women with a PhD in STEM subjects and employed at research institute in one of the scientifically lagging countries. And there we give US dollars 50,000 to help them establish a research center in their country of origin. We do training programs. We bring In the olden days before COVID, we used to bring them to Trieste, which we're based in Trieste for historical reasons because uh, we are a part of the TWAS fellowships. The TWAS stands for the, um, the uh, World Academy of Science, which happens to be based in Trieste. Italy is the most fantastically scientifically uh, exciting country. They have given us such support over the years. We are housed in the Institute for uh, Theoretical Physics and uh, the, the support we get from the uh, Italian government is, is superb. Um, so very often we used to bring women to the, the, the center there, but now we do it more online. And um, we, we give training programs for that. And at, at, the, at the moment we have 46 active fellows and 35 have completed their term. And that, this is funded, and it's been more recent since 2018, with the Canadians, the International Development Research Center in Canada. And they've been fantastic supports. And here is one of the um, early career fellows meeting in Trieste. Um, and uh, you can see they come from many different countries. And here is um, one of the early career fellows um, who comes from a, is a physicist from the Congo. Okay, this is the amazing thing, like one of our Elsevier Foundation awardees was honoured when she got the award, she was given a pre an honorary um, medal from the president of Uganda for getting the award. And next slide. So this is the knock on effect of getting these uh, foundation awards. Next slide. This is, shows somebody, a, a winner from Bolivia. And when she went to meet the president, the Bolivian president said, I'm going to declare one day a year as Women's Day. So they have now a special Bolivian Women's Day as well as the ordinary Women's Day. Next slide. I'm just trying to go through them quite quickly. Now, this is uh, probably the most important slide for people who um, are interested in membership. We've got over 9,000 active members and friends. So, for instance, the men are friends, located in 109 countries and 52 national chapters around the world. And it's the national chapters that do all the work and get the women going and uh, joy. a lot of them get school girls involved and things like that. So they are amazingly active. Next slide. And this is the different countries around the world which have got national chapters. Next slide, you can see there are lots in Africa. Next slide. And so what other organizations, so for those of you who are listening who may be able to help us, we want to help fund um, the number of uh, PhDs. We're getting a lot of funding now from industry, is particularly in Italy. We want to increase the number of early career fellowships. We have no funding at the moment for national chapters. and We'd love to be able to give particularly seed fundings to get national chapters up and running. And then... Um, in some countries, um, countries have called for women's only calls. So, for instance, in the Academy of Science in the Netherlands, one year they only had calls for fellowships for women. And that's one of the ways that other organizations can support us and um, establish other women in science and engineering um, uh, committees and organizations at different universities and research institutes to help give career support for, for the women in their organization. Next slide. And that's what we want to change. You see one woman's face in the, ma in the male organ in, in all these male graduates. So we want to change that so that we have many more women. And the last slide is just a thank you. So now how about opening for questions?